hello and welcome to nerdist book club uh that's nerdist book club i laughed through it uh we are live on nerdist youtube and geek and sundry's twitch channels i am rachel hine and joining me as always are the very funny making me laugh right before we go on air hector navarro and Ma garrett welcome how y'all doing hello <laughs> Oh, hello. I like that. That's how we'll enter from now on. Hello. Just a little Mrs. Doubtfire action. Yeah. One love for two. <laughs> you know, Robin Williams' daughter, Zelda, <laughs> sometimes yeah. gets confused for the actress who played the little girl in Mrs. Doubtfire and also in um, Mora, Matilda. Ma Mara Wilson. Mara Wilson. Who so I was confused for as yep. a child. Yep. So recently Zelda Williams on Twitter was like, cause somebody jokingly was like, well, we've never seen them both in the same place at the same time. Ha ha ha. And, and Zelda was like, well, actually I was one of the little kids at the, at the birthday party at the beginning of Mrs. Doubtfire. So like then the camera pans and then it's Mara Wilson. So that kind of counts. I thought that was a fun little, fun little oh, tidbit. Yeah. Look, if you had, um, brown hair and uh, a weird little bob with bangs, um, <laughs> Hello, still got mm -hmm. it. Uh, mm -hmm. No, I've had different hair since. Uh, this get, book's good. That is good. What did you guys think? Uh, we're, we have a lot to talk about tonight. Um, for those who are just joining us, hello, welcome. This is our show about books. Um, and send us your thoughts in the chat, uh, ask questions, all of the above. We want to chat with you, but uh, we've been reading Mexican Gothic this month um by uh sylvia moreno garcia and it is so good i loved it i gave it five stars yes yeah, same five stars nine out of ten yeah wow nine and a half nine? hector nine and hector half? where are you landing four stars baby four out of five stars that's good R really loved it especially yeah. the ending i think that uh uh i thought that the ending was the strongest part of the book and i was i thought that 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 uh, that Sylvia really stuck the ending and I was really, really happy with it. Uh, yeah, I gave it that four star. You know, maybe I knocked it off because I'm like, there was some parts that were actually pretty gross. <laughs> <laughs> there were some parts that were also very gothic horror that we'll get into, but that were, you know, maybe not my cup of tea and maybe a little boring and maybe a little bit of like, okay, I'm kind of waiting for something to happen. So Did I think that- a cup of tea? It says you're a cup of tea and just like a star girl in the chat, I can finally drink during one of these. No worky for me tomorrow. Welcome star girl. Welcome. Hey, to me too. The I put on my out of office in my email and we'll try not to compulsively check Beep. it anyway. Yeah. But great book. Great book. Great book. Great book. Really great. Yeah. I, I agree. Mod thoughts. I'm reading out some of the uh, chat with the numbers we got. We would nine out of 10. Miss Necromancer, five stars for me too. Miss Stay Peaceful, 8.5 out of 10. Lisa Hill gave it a four star. Avery gave it five stars. Jimmy gave it four stars. Job Book Geek Girl, safe with a 4.5 stars. Max Bar says 4.5. Uh, took a little to heat up for me. Good point, actually. Efrain says four stars. Uh, Black Belt is saying four out of five. This is like one of our better, higher rated books that we've done yeah. in a little while. It seems like also sometimes, you know, one of us will love a book and another won't. And I think the people who gravitate toward, towards the books that we're super into will maybe, you know, have similar opinions um, because of the way we like to read books. But it's really nice that everyone seems to have quite enjoyed this. If you didn't, that's okay. We're going to talk about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I... Max's uh, assessment with a slow start is quite accurate. It took a little bit to kind of get the wheels in motion. But for me, I think I liked exploring Noemi as a character. So I was okay to digest it over a little bit, pun intended, a little bit of time. <laughs> oh, I don't know how you uh, snuck that pun in there, Ma. There wasn't much room for that, but you were able to do it. And I'm proud of you. Really good. Really good. Oh, no, I Thanks for being a fun guy about it. I'm not going to make it. <laughs> you can't think of what. Um, <laughs> but uh i i think you know i a agree with you mod i really love noemi the character and i think getting to know her and getting to kind of get the weird creepy vibe of the house without it being 
you know, these sort of like no holds barred and like, you know, very wild ending that you probably would not have expected at the beginning of the book. And it kind of lures you into thinking it's a haunted house story. And, uh, you know, obviously we picked up on some of the elements along the way, but didn't know where those pieces fit together. But I do like that in a lot of gothic horror or a lot of thrillers, there are little things popping out at you and it is this sort of slow burn because it's suspenseful. Was it a slow burn until it was a quick burn? It was a slow burn. Until oh yeah, and then it's a quick, a quick burn. Well, I, I would say the last section kind of like ramps it up and then this section just goes to the moon. Kind Literally of. a quick burn. burn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And for everyone who called it, we did last week. I was thinking about you the entire time when we were like, all right, let's, let's play this out. Is it fire? It's fire. It's fire. And it was like the odds were three to one that it would be fire. And I was like, well, yeah. I, I abstained because I read ahead. Yes, I did. I reread it, actually listened to it a second time. And then I read it a third time in the, the last. Tamaranian's making fun of how I say fire. And I've never seen it phonetically spelt out for me, but F I Y A. Does fire. seem like fire. <laughs> fire. Fire. Thank you. Thank you. It's got an ugly R at the end. Thank fire. you. Fire. Fire. Mm-hmm. Uh, Java Book Geek Girl, come for the book, stay for the puns and tangents. You know it. Uh, let's dive into it, shall we? We have a lot to cover. I kind of want to like get into what happened and also piecing together like just all of all of the elements. Let's as, do it. As, yeah yes okay so um we kind of last left our our heroine uh noemi having been uh had to drink like black sludge and go through uh all of these weird memories of howard doyle and his cannibalism and marrying his wives and murdering a bunch of people to get their you know immortal mushroom secrets but we didn't quite know how it all worked together and I I remember last week there was a you guys were well we had a really great talk on the after show about Francis so definitely want to get into that in this section and um the idea of why why is you know what's the deal with agnes and alice why are they important and obviously that becomes clear in this section so um after noemi kind of gets the a brief lowdown from francis uh like hey you're gonna have to stay here the house is full of an evil fungus that keeps this creepy 300 plus year old man alive so i do have one question though that Yes. never really made sense how it drilled it in they all kind of were like pushing the point that if you allow the fungus to kind of like take control and become a vessel then you will be rewarded have you seen a reward in any capacity from anyone but howard who's had his life extended by centuries what kind of precipice of yeah you know what i bet it was i bet it was that if you uh-huh. struggle it's painful yeah, I bet that I bet that That's it's a it. thing. Right, I think it's a the thing. Reward where is just yep. Just, you don't feel like you're gonna choke. You or know. look at Florence's life. Florence, I mean, was not thriving, but she was alive and she was a part of the family and she had her role as kind of helping. She was not Howard. happy. No, but at least she was, was alive. She and and if if maybe if Florence had fought or resisted when she was younger then she would have been killed or she would have died or she would have ran away from the house and then died because she was cut off from this sort of like life we, source. We spoke about it in the after show and I was like, real talk. If you were in this situation, yeah, would you, exactly, would you, <laughs> would you end the control? 100%. But that's the thing. So Florence choosing life, she actually doesn't have a life at all. Um, and it's not one that you would want to, you wouldn't ever want to exist in that space state does that make her then weak or loyal you know, then you know what i think mod i think you know what part of the triforce you are courage that's what i think i think that's i'm power think. but that's cool i mean with a little bit of wisdom yeah but with what you just said yeah it's courageous it's hard it's hard to to break out of cycles of abuse it's hard yeah 
Yes. Because if it wasn't, um, stories like this wouldn't exist because somebody <laughs> would publish it and people would go, well, that doesn't make any sense. They would just leave. They would leave the house. <laughs> no, but it is It is one of those, um, I think there is an element of, yeah, cycles of abuse and not knowing, especially not knowing that there is something out there or having like given, like Francis gave up on that a long time ago because he was so beaten down and, you know, he could go to town, but you can't really go for, if you go with the intent to run away, it's going to be painful. If you go to like do an errand and you're like, you're, you're in that mindset. Your loyalty is, is would. Yeah. 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 Even though it's a forced loyalty. Yeah. And yeah. that, that actually happens to Noemi pretty quickly. Um, in the first chapter that we read this last time where she is locked in her room and uh Virgil calls for her dude can I just say fuck Virgil's fuck off Virgil worst, yeah, same. worst 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 um yeah. <laughs> just just had to get that off my chest like real quick before we get into all of the more horrible shitty things he does in this section hate him hate him uh and he calls for her and Florence sort of comes down to walk her to his room and Noemi just takes off into the rain she's like you know f this I'm I'm going out and she's imme- she immediately feels like she's being strangled. She's being like force choked by the house, Virgil, Howard, a combination therein. Um, she's in the mist. She can't see. She ends up soaked through, covered in mud. And Virgil just comes and picks her up like a rag doll, which also made me mad. Um, yeah. Everything he does makes me mad. Um, and he carries her inside. And we did have... Um, a heads up from one of uh, our fellow club members last week that there should be a trigger warning for this chapter as well as another one later. Um, yeah, yeah. That yeah. because Virgil and Howard just take- uh, Predators. <laughs> yes, they're predators and they believe that they own people and things and they're just there for their inner, for whatever they want. And that's not- how that works and so he he takes her into the bathtub and forces her to strip in front of him and take a bath and he's about to assault her again again i don't really want to get into the details we read it um but i do want to ask one thing yes because my brother's reading uh writing a book at the moment and i have had a very terse conversation about writing traumatic things in yes. literature. And the thing that I've kind of gathered from all of our conversations, I was trying to kind of simplify when we have read uncomfortable moments in a book that kind of explore trauma. Mm -hmm. And I want to hear from the chat and you guys, if you agree with this, that it is only really apt or allowable or okay in a book if A, the author is writing about it with awareness and understanding and B, there is redemption for it. Mm -hmm. Is that, does that mean like it can't, it can't just be a senseless thing. It can't just be something for shock value. I would agree. And I think that the, that the violence that happens in this book, and I'm also glad, I don't think it's in this chapter. I don't remember where it happens, but at one point, Noemi flat out says, is, is Howard just going to rape me? Or she she says the word, and I was glad that that word was in there because that word yeah. is powerful, and it's it was coming from Noemi, and and it was it was uh, it, it felt like everything you're describing, Mod, like it has this intention that Sylvia Moreno Garcia is using it as part of her themes about everything we're mm-hmm. talking about: cycles of abuse, predators, and victims, colonialism, colonial. I mean, to tie that all into it as well. So sure. I think that for me. The, the violence, now the gross supernatural stuff, you could go as hard as you want with that and all the sure. pustules and everything that, you know, exploding off of Howard's back and dream yeah, sequences, gross, gross, gross. go for it. It's gross, but I'm like, go no, to town. Sure. It's like kind of cosmic horror. It's a little Lovecraftian. And totally. You know, I think this- that- yeah, I think Sylvia did it's a little Cronenberg-y. A- it's body horror. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, body horror, which is yeah. kind of 
you know, an offshoot. I would yeah. much rather read Buddy Horror than see it. <laughs> well, this is going to be a show on Hulu, so you're going to have to see it again. <laughs> But uh, Maud's like, no, I'm never going to watch the show. It's too gross. But in, in terms of that violence, like we're talking about, the sexual violence, the moments where it feels like, is this real? Is this happening? Does it matter? It's, it's, it feels like this intrusion in a dream, and it affects Noemi. I think it's all very intentional and purposeful and was handled. And the way that it was written, I always felt uncomfortable, but I never felt like something sort of went too far with whatever that line was while in the moment reading that scene. And I always felt like Sylvia Marner Garcia kind of pulled it back right before something got really horrific because the the point of those scenes, I would feel, I thought, the ickiness I was supposed to feel. You know what I mean? Like you get to that point, she wants you to feel this certain way. She wants you to, to feel all those feelings. And then before anything kind of goes too far, it's, it's things are, are, are snapped out of it or caught or she's able to pivot or she kind of gets her senses about her. I just thought that it was really well done, but it is a great conversation to have and to be aware of, you yeah. know? So I, I do think this book did a great job, but it, I, guess, it's, I guess it depends on each circumstance. Yeah, and I, I agree with Java Book Geek Girl that this is, she says, this is one of the better books I've read with traumatic scenes because it didn't feel like it was in there just for shock factor. It fit with the storyline and themes. Totally agree. I also think, you know, it is used a lot um, as some sort of, much like fridge, like killing off a female character, fridging, it is used yeah. to like make a fee like a, a woman in a story like, more powerful later end. like it's yes and also you know not to get all sorry i thought a cat jumped up on me uh not to get all game of thrones but like the game of thrones final season had many issues but one that really got to me was sansa saying like if she hadn't have been through what she did with what's his name horrible ramsey well, yeah ramsey then she wouldn't and it, i was just like you, you can you're justifying the action, yeah. which yeah, is unjustifiable. Can, I was just talking about this last night, more about, you know, other kinds of abuse, but you can, you know, appreciate the person that you are now because of your experiences. It doesn't mean that you don't wish like, hey, it would be really great if I'd never had to go through mm -hmm. this horrible traumatic mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But I, it, I do think that it fits the themes um, of the book and and really what it is about Howard and Virgil, this sort of, which we've touched on toxic masculinity, colonialism, uh, you know, systems of abuse, uh, cycles of abuse. And that is what those characters would do. And it doesn't, they're already clearly doing very bad things but there's also that level of making her the gaslighting and making her doubt what happened and sort of, you know, casting this sort of spell on her with these mushrooms that make her feel like it's her fault, feel like um, she, maybe she want like it, it you know, a, a great allegory for, you know, being drugged and, or being taken advantage of when you're drunk. And it's never okay, but I, I do think that she was very intentional and smart about it. And it's it's hard to pinpoint, you know, where yeah, the line yeah. is, but you have to be really thoughtful about it. You have to be thinking about it a lot. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Uh, with the redemption piece, it was, yeah, people were saying, what do I mean by that? Is it redemption? Is it justice? And I think it's like that piece where um, not writing the wrong necessarily but getting yet that justice peace or being equipped with the capacity to heal instead yes. of it remaining what like you know yes broken or a permanence in it you know there's that the hope whatever it is that that peace that's Which, kind of what i've like the all-encompassing sort of uh re redemption piece uh and the cartographer said something amazing trauma for trauma's sake does nothing to advance the story or provide commentary it's like slowing down to look at an accident on a freeway. It doesn't get you to a destination and it's not helping. I like good. that. That's a good point. Ret I, retribution I, is an offered word. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think, you know, well, but I, I actually, for the la very last chapter, I typed out a couple of last lines because I think that that 
in, sort of encompasses for many characters what this story is actually about and then it does have a hopeful ending yep yep um which i really appreciated thanks so, i know we didn't want to talk about the actual thing but how it's written and how it affects was an important no 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 it's not that i it's it's more so for me i agree i agree with you it's more so i think getting like it's hard enough for a lot of people to read this that i don't want to get into the like specific language necessarily because we've already read it like but I do think how it is written and how we talk about it is super important. So don't apologize. I think that was such a great question and point you brought up. So. Yay. Thanks guys. Let's get back into it. Woo. Okay. Um, so uh, Virgil is uh, trying to kiss her and grab her like he did in her dream that wasn't a dream. And Francis finally kind of steps in and is like, all right, please stop. Leave her alone. Get out of here. Um, and, uh, what happened? oh yeah. And so she's brought to the doctor and we learn, okay, how does the doctor fit in? I know people were also guessing because he was he affected. Related? So he is, um, he is a Doyle distantly, but his daughter is Virgil's first wife. And so he basically tells Francis and Noemi is like, you didn't explain it to her. You cannot leave. You're going, every time you leave, you're going to get sick. And Ooh. Noemi is having none of it. And I love everything she says to him because it's like barb after barb. She's like, okay, I'm not going to fight you right now, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to destroy your soul with my words if I can. And she, uh, he's sort of chastising her for, you know, being a, a woman with an opinion. Mm -hmm. And she asks if his daughter was too difficult to, and that strikes a nerve. You can see him kind of feel it and he's buried it down too. And he's not even living in the house, but it's still in him. And, you know, he, he tells her that, uh, his daughter died in childbirth. And when and that to the dream that we saw, isn't it? Mm. Isn't she the one oh, who yeah. gave birth, still birth to the, mm, yes. the gray mound of whatever. Yes, that one, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes, a good connection. Cause I, it's, it is, there is a lot of- um, Family in the trees. Bloom in the dreams. And then things that we learn from different points in the past that I think, um, I didn't connect that, so that's good. But I was thinking- well, maybe not. That. Someone else is, uh, we would say that the dream is Agnes. Well, I, uh, one of the pick, dreams man. is happens more than once. When she's being suffocated and all of those things, that's definitely her. I think it might be though, because of everything we learn about Agnes at the end, that she's the one sending the messages. But I, I imagine that uh, they ate her baby when she died, because that's what they do. Yeah. Camp. I, I just assumed that this was ritualistic by now. And since Agnes was first, and then as soon as she said she it died. Is. Oh, it definitely is. But I yeah. think I think maybe because as we, you know, learn at the end, which I think is just such ugh, so good. Uh it's all tied up in Agnes. Like yeah. the memories, the pain, everything like that. So mm -hmm. um then no Noemi and Francis are left alone and she starts speaking to her in Spanish. And base, which also answers our way earlier question of were they speaking Spanish? Were they speaking English? No, all of these white colonizers <laughs> were speaking English and she was speaking English yep. with them. And now Francis is using Spanish, which his dad taught him to kind of avoid Howard hearing them through the gloom. And he says he still has Marta's tincture. He didn't get rid of it. It'll help her fight off the house. That's how Catalina was able to get out and send her letter in the first place. Mm -hmm. And he kind of reiterates that Howard is gonna die soon and his consciousness will be transferred into the gloom and then into Virgil. And while that is happening, everyone will be distracted. That's the perfect time to try to get away. Was it actually said that it would transfer to Virgil or was that an assumption we all made? I think it was an assumption that Francis and Noemi made. I'm pretty so sure. So it was said? I think it may have been. Yeah, I think it was said, but I don't think that 
Francis or Noemi knew that they were actually planning it for Francis. Just that a transfer would happen and it would all signs pointed to him. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. Keep going. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. Um, and Hector's, are you looking it up in the book? Yeah. But keep going. I'm looking, I'm looking to see no, if they just, do say it's going to be Virgil. It's going to be him. So he kind of tells her like, look, you have to play along with this until we can get you out of here. But play along means uh, we have to get married and they want to just bring you into the family, which means you're going to be essentially used to make babies for mm -hmm. this weirdo for him then to also do the same thing over and over again. I just can't imagine being in that position and knowing what you know at that point that this yeah. has been going on for so long and now you've been sucked into it. Um, 100%. Uh, Francis does say he will take possession of Virgil's body. Got it. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. His body will give way soon. And, and afterward, he'll begin the transmigration. He will take possession of Virgil's body. Yeah. So we were saying that Virgil was the heir. So it feels implied that he will be Howard's receptacle. Yeah. Because no, no, they do state it. Yeah. But, and then later, you know, it's basically like, why would they ruin the, the good son? Take over the one we don't like, the nephew we don't like. Mm -hmm. um, which is so sad. I didn't see that um, coming. That was a good twist. I know. I didn't either. Um, yeah, I actually thought Howard had already kind of somewhat infiltrated. Yeah, Virgil. I remember I, that. I thought Virgil was that together. split personality where it was like, when he's good, he's good. When he's bad, he's Howard. No, no, no. He's just a, I went to say shit stain of a person. Yeah. Said, yeah. Uh, psychotic, narcissist, and I want to armchair diagnose, but one of the two where they can turn it on when they need to, but there's not actually any good stuff happening in there. Um, Sounds a little bit like narcissistic personality disorder. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my favorite. Uh, whew. I did really like this this part too. And, and throughout sort of when they're pretending with the other Doyles that Noemi really wants to trust Francis, even though he hasn't been honest with her up until this point. He has tried to warn her. We talked about, I'm, I'm very excited to talk with everyone in the after show and get their thoughts now that we finished the book. And I think there are, you know, multiple ways of viewing it and, and some of this and some of that, that of course it would be terrifying and it's all you've ever known, but also, but in this section, he basically says, you know, I was a coward. I was pretending, but then you came along and I couldn't do that anymore. Yeah. And I thought there's, that was sweet. There's a thing he says, a real quick paragraph I want to read. This is the only yeah. part of this whole section of, for this week that I want to read that I thought was like, man, that could really convince me that Francis is, um, is a good dude. He says, there's a cicada fungus, Massapora cicadina. Yeah. I remember reading a journal article which discussed its appearance. The fungus spouts along the abdomen of, of the cicada. It turns it into a mass of yellow powder. The journal said the cicadas, which had been so grossly infected, were still singing as their body was consumed from within, singing, calling for a mate half dead. Can you imagine? Francis said. You're right. I do have a choice. I'm not going to end my life singing a tune, pretending everything is fine. I felt like that was the, 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 the character being like, I just really liked that he read this passage and it stuck with him for I don't know how long, like how long he'd been studying funguses and fungi and, and cicadas he comes across this thing and he just goes that's me that's my life yeah and he right he relates to this to this creature and he found he finds it to be so sad that as it dies it makes this noise and then it dies from within from getting eaten out from inside so i thought that was like for a character who is who we are told is very kind of quiet and shy mm -hmm. and not as outgoing as you know other members of the family and not a strong man whatever bullshit machismo bullshit this is him being like look, I'm going to give you a nerdy explanation for why I'm doing this. And I bought it. So I really like that paragraph. Yeah, I think totally agree. And I also think like when you are, I think there is an element for a lot of people who have experienced any kind of major trauma that you read something, you read a book or a memoir, you see a movie or a show that really encapsulates that. And it's like, 
an arrow to the heart. Like it's a, it's good and painful at the same time to feel seen yeah. and to feel like your experiences are shared with other people. Mm -hmm. Um, but also it's incredibly painful, um, to relive all of that. But I, I mean, I remember books that I read as a teenager that I had those kinds of moments that, you know, it highlight them and write in the margins and just like <laughs> obsess over it because I was like, yes, finally someone has, you know, distilled what I'm feeling and put it down to paper. Mm -hmm. Um, so mm -hmm. I really like that too. Yeah. Uh, Hector, you want to start us off on the next section? Chapter 22. The next night, Noemi and Francis are called to see Virgil. He asks if she's going to cooperate, and she says she doesn't want to end up like the miners dead in a pit used as mulch for the fungus. Virgil tells her that she must write a letter to her father, telling him she will be staying through Christmas after she and, and that was also creepy to be reading right now. It's like, ooh, perfect timing. I know. After she and Virgil are married, she'll write to him, or after she and uh, Francis are married, oh, yeah. Sorry. she'll write to him and tell him, we wouldn't want your father visiting us and maybe falling ill with an odd disease, would we? Is what Virgil says. So she's like, you wouldn't, and then has to write it. Virgil informs her that they are to have a wedding ceremony because Howard says so. When she lashes out at him, he threatens to rape her. Francis feebly steps in and tells Virgil to respect his wife-to-be. When Virgil leaves, Noemi is distraught, asking Francis for a weapon to protect herself. Though there are no guns in the house, he offers her his straight razor. And she's like, okay, yeah, that'll do. That'll do. Give it to me. He goes, okay, I hope you, I hope you don't mind a little stubble. <laughs> I was like, show me fan fiction of Francis with a beard. Oh, my God. I know. I <laughs> always. It was, it was like a day a or two, guys. A little scruff. A little scruff. It depends on the person. A little all scruff. Of a, all of a sudden, he got way hotter. <laughs> well, is no, this a metaphor? Just so like when a, the beard came through, he, so did his masculinity. Yes, the machismo of the beard. Exactly right. Uh, so then the two I share a moment I together. I would never describe Francis. I think, and, <laughs> but I like that. I like yeah. that he's super sensitive and, yes. you know. Noemi decides to trust him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, which is great. Ma, take the next one, chapter 23. Now that everything is out in the open, the Doyles allow Noemi to see Catalina without a chaperone. The tincture seems to be working. Catalina has woken up from her trance as if from a spell, but she's still not entirely herself. Noemi goes to try on her wedding dress. Ugh, I could smell it when I was reading I it. I know, mothballs and- Yes. Yeah. Depression. Hand me down. What's up? Just mothballs and depression is what I think. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, uh, hand me down from all the sister wife child brides of years past Florence says that although Howard claims it's about her genes it's really the common lust of all men he just simply wants to have you like a little butterfly in his co collection one more pretty girl so weird and disturbing to hear her talk about her father like that uncle father uncle, uncle. yeah Probably yeah, both. I, that's why I had like that quote to me, but it also feels so real. Like there are so many men who just, I want the thing, I will take the thing. Doesn't matter if it's illegal, if they don't want, like, I just feel like this en encompasses a very huge, like part of our modern culture right now. And it's deeply upsetting, but I, I felt like that just really resonated to me when you think about, you know, from billionaires who don't pay any taxes and mistreat their workers to the outgoing president of the United States to dudes in positions of power, et cetera. I just, I felt like- You yeah. know what they all have in common? No beads. <laughs> True. Yeah. True. Hector, you've got- Many things going for you, but especially a beard. <laughs> Guys with beards are trustworthy. No, they're not. No, no. <laughs> Doesn't mean anything. No blankets. <laughs> so Francis brings her the razor. They hear a groan of pain from upstairs. Howard is going to transmigrate soon. He couldn't before because he had no body to go into. He now has an adult to take over whose brain is fully developed. He's been healing the house, the family himself, ever since the... Ruth attack with the shotgun but now he's strong enough and he will die and his body will fruit and he'll begin a new cycle the fact that the body will fruit Ugh. and the mulch and just this idea of like it is obviously when you it's sort of like uh 
the speech Mufasa gives Simba of the circle of life, but in a very twisted, horrible way that's not natural because none of these people are dying of natural causes. They're yeah. Yeah. killed by yes. this. Yes, yes, dear. It was a drive-by fruiting, dear. That's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> that's from Mrs. Doubtfire. Remember yes, when I know. Pierce. I that Rosnan. was such a good accent. So yeah, good. <laughs> I was just wow. distracted by how good that was. <laughs> like, so he, he explains that's why he can't leave with her. He's just too connected to the house. Uh, someone made a point in the chat earlier when Marta was saying that uh, there's a curse. And she's like, the house, the family? She's like, what's the difference? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because mm, they are the same. Uh, she tells him she must doesn't he want to leave and so this is what i find very noemi-esque is that she's trying to rescue him mm -hmm. and he can't be rescued uh for god's sake you can't be that blind i want to follow you wherever you may go to the damn antarctic even if i freeze my toes off who cares but the tincture can sever your link between you and the house not mine i've lived too long with it ruth tried to find a way around it tried to kill howard to escape that didn't work. And my father's gambit didn't work either. There's no solution. How romantic. <laughs> I just, I really like that because he is so shy and he's been so sort of tentative and he, <laughs> everything's out in the open now. And he's like, I feel like you can feel his frustration. Like, yes, of course I want to leave. And I want to leave with you. I'm obsessed with you. You're so cool and smart and you're tough and like, <laughs> I just love that they're sort of, it does play around with gender roles as well in that, you know, he doesn't represent this horrible machismo thing. And she's also mm -hmm. not a good girl. She is opinionated. Mm -hmm. She will, she can play the game. She can, she can do it in the proper way, but she still gets her. Well, what I found disgusting by that is that obviously the house has a sway. The house has a, way to manipulate an individual and the way that Virgil has bestowed that and used it is to make her lust yep not belligerent not um you know Catalina is the fairies even yeah uses her lust against her and that's when I was like no and that and also her all of her own insecurities is she just a party girl is she selfish? All of these things that, you know, all of us have in the back of our head. It felt like the house was bringing that on so that she would feel that way whenever she tried to resist him, which is dis mm. disturbing. Yeah. yeah. Later that night, Noemi dreams well, to try and find Ruth in the gloom. Uh, they're in the cemetery at the statue of Agnes in the mausoleum. This is our mother, Ruth says. She sleeps, but Agnes isn't her mother. She died before she could have children. So Noemi asks Ruth if a Doyle could ever leave the house. And Ruth speaks again of her own plans to murder Howard. But she tried to keep her mind clear by writing down her intentions. When asked about wanting to run away with Benito, Ruth says, I did. Perhaps you could. I thought I could. But it's a compulsion. It's in the blood. I, you know, in terms of the family cycle of abuse, all of those feelings of, I can't escape this. I'm going to turn, and it happens in the end too. I'm going to turn into them. There's part of me that's wrong because I come from this. It's in my, like, that is just extremely relevant. I really thought you were joking before because we were talking about mobs when you did that. Um, <laughs> but it is, it is that, I mean, it is that fear of, I don't want to turn out like them. Yep. Uh, and that really spoke to me. So it's, it's such a it's such a universal story, right? I love that. Every every story is about an adult not wanting to turn into their parents and then inevitably turning into their parents. Oh my god! <laughs> Unless you don't, not, in which case, congrats. Not necessarily. Yeah. Good God, please. Yep. Um. <laughs> oh no. Uh. So we get to chapter twenty-four. So. It's the night of the wedding. I couldn't remember, I was trying to, my brain is broken. What is the line in the Princess Bride when it's the fake out? Marriage. No. Is, is what I wins know us that. together no. today. No. 
that's the when line. They're... The line it's is well, the actual wedding when Fred Savage is mad because he's like, what? She can't marry him. And grandpapa is like, she does and she will. But it's the nightmare. And it's like, it was the six day. No, it was the night of the, anyway. Someone in the chat figured it out because we got it. What's the question though? It was, what is the line in the princess bride that sort of starts like, it was the night of the wedding, but it's the fake out scene. Oh, got it, got it, got it. I, I hear you. Remember. Yeah, yeah. And it's, and it is- the the Peter Falk narration, right? Because he's setting up the nightmare. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Night of the wedding, and uh, he hadn't. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, through the house. I know, because I wanted to put stirring. it in for for us that joke reference, but I couldn't think of it. Something like and he the, and the dread pirate Roberts never came or something. Yeah, something know. like that. Yeah. Someone look it up. Or I think I need to watch the movie again. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe tonight. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's the night of the wedding different wedding both scary in different ways but this one much worse uh they start with a banquet in silence super cool and eventually make their way to howard's room for the ceremony she's in her gross wedding dress and she and francis kneel before uh howard in his bed and they have to eat these two little yellow mushrooms, which is sort of this twisted sacrament, which I also found very interesting in- Catholicism. Mm. Yes, and also in uh, colonialism and bringing Christianity or Catholicism to cultures that already had their own religion. And if you wanted food or survival or anything, you had to basically you know, but- join the missionaries. Yeah. It, I thought that was super interesting. Um, Noemi is taken to her room, which has been dressed up in sort of sad flowers and candles to make it seem romantic. It's not romantic. She feels lightheaded, almost drunk. The, the mushrooms tasted like Virgil did when she felt that like sickly sweet uh, in her dreams, which to me feels like this is them drugging her to make her again, more compliant, more lustful yep um and she lays down on the bed and starts to sink into the gloom into another wedding is it agnes is it alice she's sort of feeling the same vibes of a very different wedding you know years and years ago and when virgil appears in the doorway she thinks that it's it's the gloom again he can't be here but he is here he's in the room leering at her he tells her that they knew about her plans with Francis. They knew about the chink- tincture and they've given her an aphrodisiac, AKA they drugged her. They, mm. you know, put a roofie in her drink essentially. And he gaslights her completely. She starts to doubt herself. She's again, falling into this sick spell that they're the house and Virgil and Howard are casting that makes her not fight it and think that she wants it and that is like gaslighting 101 but with magic mushrooms i guess um uh and he tries to force himself on her but she she kind of slows him down and says i have to i have to take off this dress it's going to be for all of our children the house and the mushrooms are hypnotizing her making her believe she wants this but she doesn't the mold in the corner starts to drip and it reminds her of that horrible black sludge that they made her drink. And it sort of snaps her out of it for a second. Yes. But that this is like a whole nother element to this where to me, that sludge felt voyeuristic. Mm, oh, was watching and enjoying it. Yeah. Interesting. I, I didn't, that's great. The house was like, it's feeding. And it was becoming aroused. Like it was literally like a, exacerbating. It was, it was undulating yeah yeah <laughs> yeah becoming more and more apparent and gaining power over this over her sexual energy yeah. that was fabricated mm-hmm. gross yeah. very good point uh but that gross sludge kind of reminds her of having to drink that liquid and it sort of snaps her out of it she shoves virgil away lunges for the razor hidden under her mattress She knocks Virgil out. She takes the tincture from his pocket to bring her back to herself to take more and sort of get back to 
you know, to fight off the house, but she considers stabbing Virgil in the head. Yep. Just do it. I know. I, I know. And it wouldn't, you know, you need more elements of the story. If it were real life, I would hope she would just stab him in the head. I mean, she's I sorry, cool. he wasn't in the head. Right. I probably, he, I kind of get it where it's like every second, second counts. Counts. and you're panicked. Mm -hmm. You don't know where, where is been, flight mode, like, not fight mode. Like Catalina. Yeah. Yeah. She was flight. It would have been cool if she stabbed him. And then dude still shows up later with a stabbed head because the, the house sort of healed him. You know what I mean? That still would have been cool. Like, oh man, I thought cool. he was dead and then he still showed up. Anyway. I don't think I would feel strong enough to put a straight razor through like bone. Yeah, that's true. You could so slice just, dice. I just mean, Yeah. Got to swizzle it up like, the nose, swirl it around a little bit. No, I would just. Oh, that's good. That's smart. Yeah, that's probably the yeah. way to go. That's, that's how a vulnerable area. But I also would be full panicking. So I'd yeah. probably be like, okay bye i'd right. kick him in the temple but then that might wake him well, up no i probably run as well i don't know I, i'm glad i will never know <laughs> at the very least you take that straight razor and then you take his penis and then you sl cut it off. Okay. <laughs> you get rid of the mushroom yeah that's right <laughs> the mushroom and the roots the little balls okay next chapter chapter 25 <laughs> all right that's for you me <laughs> Naomi goes to fetch Catalina, who is also in some sort of trance. The maid, Mary, all of a sudden, I'm like, where are you coming from, Mary? Yeah. Attacks Noemi as if on autopilot, surprisingly strong. Noemi drops the razor as Mary begins to strangle her. Hours, Mary says. Hours, channeling the house. Noemi can barely breathe until suddenly she's released. Francis has arrived and pulls Mary off of her. Mary immediately tackles him, and when Noemi tries to stop her, she leaves him to finish Noemi off. Noemi slashes her throat, and the woman falls to the floor, dead. Nomi asks why Francis didn't come for her, afraid he betrayed her, but he had been locked in his room and just escaped, or so he says, but I believe him up to this point. They grab Catalina, who has likely been drugged, and head out into the hall and bump directly into Florence. Oh, my God. Can I say Dang. really great writing to have us at any moment Francis could turn? Yep. yep. We were never sure of his loyalty. Yep. There was a part where she even says, I don't think I can trust you. So like re yes. just like invigorating and re reinstating that Tense. we just don't know where he stands and he could be a puppet still. Love I liked it. that writing. Yeah, Love because it. you shouldn't trust him necessarily. Or anybody in life at any point is the message. I Hello. Think. Math is okay. Go. So Florence is yeah, there. Yeah, is good. Florence with her like, old crusty ass and she's holding a gun pointed directly at Noemi. Rachel, these notes are vulgar. Uh, I so, did not write that. What? It's weird. So uh, Noemi drops the razor. Florence marches the group back to Howard's room where they reveal that Francis is to be taken over by Howard, not Virgil. Why would he have given up on, why would he given up his son, his favorite? It was always going to be Francis. He's your son, Noemi whispered. It's a body, Florence replied, her face stiff. A body, that's all they were to them. The bodies of minors in the cemetery, the bodies of women who gave birth to their children, and the bodies of those children who were simply the fresh skin of the snake. And there on the bed lay the body that mattered, the father. The doctor, Florence, Noemi, Francis, and Catalina are told to kneel and pray. The whispers of their chants sound like their one voice as the buzzing sound from before grows louder and louder. Catalina, though, was quietly moving closer to Howard. Love this part Redemption. so much. Yeah. One of my oh, favorite yeah. parts oh, in so satisfying. the book. I seriously like fist pumped and I was like, yeah, girl, <laughs> get it. Like out loud in yeah, the middle of God. my kitchen reading this. She <laughs> wakes from her dreamy state and is full of rage. She stabs the, she grabs the doctor's scalpel and plunges it directly into Howard's eyeball. She stabs him again and again. And, and the others in the room seem to feel his pain. So they all recoil. Nomi grabs Francis still in a, in a haze to run, but Florence grabs her ankle and she falls. Nomi goes for the gun, but Florence is too fast, too strong. And she's about to pull the trigger. Francis tackles his mother and the gun goes off and Francis has killed his mom, Florence. Howard grabs for her, covered in blood and black mucus. He commands Francis to come toward him and Noemi sees that he's being compelled. The, that, the same way that Ruth was compelled to kill herself by Howard is what she's like piecing together. So Noemi grabs the gun from Francis and shoots Howard. Francis snaps awake. Howard begins to convulse and shriek like a fish still writhing after its head's been cut off. Noemi drops the gun because it's out of bullets grabs Francis and Catalina and rushes out the door. They leave Howard thrashing, dying on the bed behind them. Great chapter. I had so good. And I had to point out that the gun was out of bullets because otherwise I would have been like, take the gun with you. Yep, what yep, are you yep, doing? Yep, yep. 
yep, 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 yep. Yeah, this was such a satisfying chapter, even though they're not out of the woods by any stretch. They're about to go into the woods. I'm not going to sing it, but know that I am thinking it in my head. Um, and there is, you're right, Maude, there is that vengeance. And Catalina, who has been such a side character, she hasn't had really much voice or agency in this in this story yeah, so far. Yeah. And yeah, Ooh. I just think that it's really cool that she fills in. As uh, so yes, chapter 26. So this is the one, this is the cool one. So they're running through the house they run into the other servants, Lizzie and Charles, but they are clearly just broken. Howard has lost control and they are stuck in their own minds, just twitching. They don't know what to do yet. The three of them, Catalina, uh, Noemi, and Francis, head down the back stairs and the banister seems to move beneath Noemi's fingers. The house is alive again. The gloom is trying to stop them. They head to a hidden passageway behind a pantry they recover the, the bags that Francis had made for them, for them to escape and barricade the door behind them so they can try to get beyond this secret passageway. Suddenly they hear Howard groan again. He's weak and in pain and angry, but he is not dead. He's been shot, he's been stabbed. He was already very, very old, but he's clinging on. They make their way into the passageway, which leads to the family crypt, sort of this underground tunnel. Instead of what you would imagine an underground underground tunnel to look like. It is painted, has these tiles painted with flowers and vines, all of these uh, sconces that are shaped like snakes. It's very, again, like all of Howard's rituals, it's leading to this altar. And it's lined with those little yellow mushrooms that they ate, but these ones are alive and they are glowing. Uh, they don't even need the light at some point. Uh, Francis obviously isn't doing so well. The house and Howard, they affect him because of his blood. They stagger towards this huge door with the Ouroboros symbol on it, and it leads to the chamber beneath the crypt. And this is when shit gets super real. Um, all of these mushrooms are glowing to the point where they don't need the lantern. Um, I had a quote, but we're running out of time, so I'm gonna keep going. Uh, there's this, basically this altar and Noemi is drawn to it. And she, she can sense that this presence that has been speaking to her, this golden woman is there. This buzzing gets louder and louder and she opens the curtain and this, it's the face of death. It is Agnes. She has been wow. mummified and preserved here covered in they're growing out the mushrooms are growing out of her they're around her they've like pinned her to the wall in a weird sort of crucifixion kind of deal and she knows that it's agnes and that she was buried alive in a coffin screaming for help and that doyle because he was a scientist because he he was unfortunately very smart and evil uh he knew that the fungus needed a mind excuse me um, <laughs> did you hear that or was yeah. it just yeah um the fungus itself has no mind and no consciousness so doyle realized that although the mushrooms could heal they could connect to your mind with others they couldn't provide true immortality so he sacrificed agnes as this vessel for the memories that could give him control over immortality and now agnes and the gloom are basically the same thing they have just sunk into each other and all of this is her pain and her suffering and her memories and everyone else who has died there again mm -hmm. very hill house fly manner as well mm -hmm. pulling these memories in and meshing them with all of her pain for centuries potentially um and then Virgil shows up. He this mother. <laughs> I know he shows up and is like, "Don't worry, I planned this all so that I could just take over for my dad, and we'll probably, you know, need more servants to kill and reopen the mines and use all of your money, and you'll make me plenty of babies. It'll be great." 
And Francis is like, absolutely, even though he's in pain, he's physically can't, almost can't fight him, he does. And they're tumbling, they're fighting back and forth. There's a really great sort of description of them going toe to toe. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, Catalina, does a little stabby stab much like she did with Howard and Noemi because Ruth has been saying open your eyes this whole time and it's meant different things throughout the book but at this point she realizes all Agnes wants is out of this she wants to wake up she wants to be done with this pain and so Noemi throws the lantern at her and the mushrooms just <sighs> catch on fire and uh when Catalina stabs Virgil, she just mm, twists the knife. I was like, yes, kill him. <laughs> I just was really excited. I was like, yes, I hope he dies. He hasn't become the Howard yet, so he's not going to come back, ideally. And the two women, Catalina and Noemi, carry Francis, rescue Francis, the damsel in distress, another sort of twist on all of these narratives uh mm -hmm. to the cemetery and they watch the house burn down awesome antonio was saying i just hope that naomi would light a sig to start the fire tell me about it Stan. just like <laughs> no yeah, lighting yeah. a fire on a like burning mushroom would be pretty dope yeah <laughs> mod close this out i'd love to Catalina and Noemi bring Francis to Dr. Camarillo, who tends, have I nailed that? Camarillo. 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 Who Camarillo. tends to all of, mm, tends to all of Sorry, them. I nodded them. like I'm the expert. The, <laughs> Spanish. Mm. Same time in English, but I don't remember a lot of it. Uh, fetches Mar Martha's tincture. The three of them drink, but Francis falls into a deep sleep and he just hasn't woken up in two days. Noemi stays by his side, so he won't wake up alone. Oh, this romance is blossoming, which is the only thing that is because everything else is decimated. Wait, <laughs> desecrated. Desecrated? Decimated. Decimated. Like, they're both good words. I like them. Uh, mm -hmm. When he does wake, he asks if the house really is gone. Can the mushrooms sprout again? Uh, they'll burn it again if they have to, says Noemi, because he he's always been the knowledge. He reads the books. He knows the shit. And so he was like, ah, uh, these glowing mushrooms or some one particular strand of mushrooms in, in forest fires that actually they get uh, yeah. spurned on by that. So he's like, you know, covering covering his bases. Uh, but Noemi's like, I'll take care of it. Don't even worry about it. He asks what they will do when her father arrives. Their cover story is that Virgil went mad and tried to finish what his sister started. The story doesn't quite explain why they're co covered in blood or why Noemi is in a wedding gown. But Noemi says that her father will smooth things out and that she's taking Francis with her to Mexico City. Didn't ask, told him. <laughs> yeah, I know. She's like, you're coming with me. You Which is why they're a good fit. She has the masculinity and he has the femininity. I know, I love it. No, it's I, I, I just would like to say that I, I think that'd be a, 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 a fantastic idea. I mean it, That's I can come Francis. with you. She's like, what else am I, you can't yeah. stay, you have no family. You, you know? do, you're gonna go crawl into the mushrooms again. Like, yeah. I got an eye on Get you. Over here. You're okay. tethered, you're tethered to this. We gotta get you out of here. He does tell her though that uh, he tells her dreamed that he was alone in the house, trapped inside. It had grown stronger and more vivid with forests of mushrooms lining the wall. Uh, we call this a sequel. Um, oh God, I kind of hope so. <laughs> I love this book. <laughs> she climbs into bed with him under the covers to comfort him and herself. She promises him that they will stay together and he won't be alone. And then they finally sleep and Noemi has no dreams. I thought I dreamed you, Francis says a little sleepy. I'm real, she replied, a murmur. Oh, gothic romance. Uh, they were quiet. Slowly she leaned forward, kissing him on the mouth so that he knows that she's truly there. And he sighed, intertwining his fingers with hers and closing his eyes. The future, she thought, could not be predicted and the shape of things could not be divined. Divi divined? To think otherwise was absurd. But they were young that morning and they could cling to hope hope that the world could be remade kinder and sweeter so she kissed him a second time for luck and when he looked at her again his face was filled with such an extraordinary gladness and the third time she kissed him it was for love 
I just think that's such a good ending for such yeah. a fucked up book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I appreciate, I'm normally the one rooting for like realistic, nihilistic ending, but I, I really liked this. And, um, well, I think it kind of was, uh, realistic because I think they yeah. absolutely left the door open to be like, this is going to happen again mm -hmm. because that's kind of how cycles of abuse work. And these two characters are going to live with this trauma for probably the rest of their lives. Even if they pretend to, you know, be in Mexico city and be young and party. I think that if, um, Sylvia Moreno Garcia ever wanted to do a sequel, she absolutely could. I yeah. would love it if the sequel took place like 40 years later. You know what I mean? Where maybe these characters yeah. are older and things are different and maybe there's a there's a new child character that has to contend with this. Their history. Bird, this, would yeah. Howard have written a will? Who would be inheriting the land? That's a great question. That's well, and also all, if yeah. You, yeah. Family is so important. If you have a kid, you know, there's the, there's, I would imagine that maybe they wouldn't want the kid to know about this because they wouldn't want it to color them but and like influence them. But then if they find out anything about it, they're going to be dr drawn to go see the place where- Save it, save it, save it, save it for the after show because we're pitching a book idea <laughs> for Sylvia Moreno Garcia and she's listening right now and she's like, got it, you got it, got it. <laughs> I want to read all of her books. Um, I love this book. I love how weird it is. I love how dark and it, but also so smart. And the fact that she wrote her thesis on yeah. eugenics um, is like, obviously she knows what she's talking cool. about, but final thoughts on the book, y'all. Great. It got me into Gothic horror as a genre. Yeah. It's so like, weird. It doesn't have to be that scary. Which is so weird because my whole, like for the last decade, even 15 years, I've said I won't read a book unless it's got a dragon in it. Yeah. Uh, we recently read a book with a lot of dragons in it. And I was a bit- And I was the one that liked it. Yeah. <laughs> and now here I am really adoring your genre of choice, which is Gothic horror, Gothic romance. And so I'm so excited that this has turned a new leaf. <laughs> Next up. My my genre, crappy sci-fi. And then you guys will like it. No, well, no, you won't. No, you I won't. love I've already <laughs> done crappy sci-fi. Are you kidding? <laughs> no, I mean like John Carter of Mars. I mean like some outdated. I'm down we st speaking of, we're gonna need a new book for January, but your homework for this week is to read chapters one through eighteen of Throne of Glass. Stop at chapter nineteen. 18 that's right you are reading 18 chapters Get one through 18 it, stop at 19 i'm stop. already on chapter three <laughs> again guys i already read the whole book <laughs> well mod has also just kidding uh, i haven't i haven't yeah i've read, read it twice it. so mm -hmm. this will be my third <laughs> mod where are we going right now we're gonna head over to geek bombs discord uh look even if you don't sign up to patreon you can join the discord but the book club section is a paid perk that you can get from patreon.com slash geekbomb. Sign up to any tier. Even the smallest one gets you access to it. It's good bang for your buck because you get after show Q&A with us four times a month. Yay. And we have in-depth discussions. I think this one's just going to be an all-in conversation, uh, which I'm really excited about. Just having a chat about the book, pitching what the sequel will look like, favorite characters, favorite moments. So make sure you sign up for that. Yeah, it's so much fun and we we get so many great ideas from all of you and questions. And then also we'll talk about like the foods we absolutely will never eat <laughs> because mushrooms. Yeah. That was where that started. So right. <laughs> join us there. It is so much fun. We will see you next week for the first section of Throne of Glass. Have a great Thanksgiving if you are celebrating uh hope you all stay safe wherever you are and we will see you next week